Hey, Prime Tree Math for RGT, this is Coach Saiful with your daily dose of math mastery. So last week we had a really good time in class. Uh, we did a lot of fractions and we're going to continue right right there where we stopped. Um, some of you still don't understand what fractions are. We actually you do, but you don't understand how to add different kinds of fractions, right? You know, you've already learned one way of doing it. I'm going to teach you a few ways today. But first, let's do the last question we did, um, I gave to you last week on Friday. The question was this. Mr. Lo wants to buy a television set which costs $4,888. If he still needs $976 after borrowing $880, how much money does he have at first? So let's see how we do this question. Okay, so it says that Mr. Lo wants to buy a television set which costs what? $4,888. Now, he still needs $976 after borrowing $880. So... Let's write down the amount first. He needs 4,000... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Having a sore throat right here. 4,888. And he's... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> he still needs $976, right? After he borrowed $880. And the amount he had at first was this amount. So in other words, what he did was, first he had an amount of money. We don't know how much that is. That's the question, right? And he borrowed $880 from a friend. Maybe he borrowed $880 from the guy called Jack. So this is Jack. Hi, I'm Jack. <laughs> Hi, I am Jack. Okay? So he borrowed $880 from Jack. And he still needed $976 more. So what we need to do is we need to plus all of them together and that will equal to the amount that he needs for TV. So, what we must do is, we must first do this. We must take $4,888, which is the cost of the TV, we minus the amount that he still needs, okay? $976. So you do your math. I'm going to use the calculator right now. 4888 minus 976 equals to... 3912. So after borrowing, no, he still needs 3912 after borrowing $880. So that means before that, he had how much? All you have to do is 3912 minus $880. And you're gonna get the answer of let me do this uh let me do this mentally. Three no, no, yes, three. Um three two. Let's check. 3912 minus 880. 3032. Oops, I missed a zero. <laughs> so you must always check your answer. 3032. Okay? And the answer is 3032. So if you got it right, high five. You are a math prodigy. Good job. Okay? So that's all there is to it. Okay? But let's, I'm more concerned about fractions right now because I know that you all love fractions so much and we're going to do a lot more of this in the future. Okay, so let's do this right now. We learned uh, on Saturday, no, on Sunday, we learned that whenever you want to plus a number that looks like this, fractions that look like this, what must you do? Correct. You must actually make sure that this number looks exactly the same as this number. And what you must do is, you must do a magic trick. And that magic trick is called times 4. Because 2 times what gives you 8? And the answer is 4. But you must also remember that you must be fair to both numbers. If we times 4 to the bottom, uh, to the de denominator, you must also times 4 to the top, which is the numerator. And so it will look something like this. 4 over 8. Don't even need to think for a second one. Just copy it down. Plus 1 over 8 equals to 5 over 8. So if you got it right, high five. You are a math prodigy. Good job. So that is all there is to it. And then you guys got a little confused. You guys got a little confused when I did this. 1 over 8 plus half equals 2. And you guys got confused and you all said that we times what, we times uh, we times 2 here, which is wrong. You know why? Because what we must do is, what we want to do is we want to make both of this look the same. And we must always pick the bigger number, okay? So this is level two. Must make sure they both look the same. 
So in this case, what you must do is multiply the smaller number by 4. So multiply by 4 here, and multiply by 4 on top. Remember, it must be fair. And then we just copy the first one because it doesn't change, and we copy the bottom one. Now, the, bot the bottom number, you don't have to even think. The number is this one because we already want to make it the same. So you put 8 there, and we put 4 above, and we still get 5 over 8. Why? Because 1 over 8 plus 1 over 2, I'm going to write this down, is actually the same as saying 1 over 2 plus 1 over 8. It's very simple, guys. Very, very simple. Right? It's the same thing. So let me show you level 3. Oh, we're getting to level 3 right now. Level 3 is going to look like this. Okay? This is level 3. 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2. Now, look for the bigger number. The bigger number is 3. Correct? Yes. But what number can we multiply 2 to to get 3? Nothing. We can't find a number. So now what we must do is we must actually find something called the lowest common denominator. Oh, what does that mean? This is scary. Okay, take a look at this. Alright? This is the denominator, right? You have to look for the lowest common. So what must you do is you must multiply, you must use your times table to find the common, which is the same number in both. So you write down 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and then you write on the other side, you write for 2. So you write 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Oh no, now we have two common numbers, two same numbers, which is 6 here, and 6 here, and 12 here, and 12 here. But which one do we pick? Remember, you're looking for the lowest, lowest common denominator. In this case, this is the lowest and it's the common denominator. So all you have to do is multiply the bottom, the denominator, to make it look like a 6. So we write the 6 first. Now let me ask you a question. What times 3 gives you 6? Correct, 2. So you put 2 on top, 2 below. 2 becomes 2 over 6. And what times 2 gives you 3? It gives you 6. It's 3. Correct, good job. So times 3 here and times 3 above and you will get 3 over 6. And hence the answer is 5 over 6. If you understand that, give yourself a high five. You are a math prodigy. If not, rewind and listen to it again and again until, the keyword here is until, you get it. Alright? Now, the question, now that you understand this, the question for the day is very simple. How many 8s are there in the sum of 1 over 2 and 1 over 8? Sum means what? Remember we talked about this? Sum means same. Nope. Sum Always remember when you say sum, it means what? Same. And when you just think of same, you think of plus. So sum means half plus 1 over 8. So they're asking you how many 8s are there in the sum of these and this. So do that question. I know you know how to do this. It's very simple stuff. I'm very proud of you. And remember, that today's quote of the week. Oh, today's quote of the week. Ah, there's a new quote of the week for the day. And the quote of the week is slow and steady wins the race. What does that mean? You know, the, there is the story of the, of the rabbit and the uh, tortoise. The slow and steady, right, um, at the end of the story, the slow and steady tortoise wins the race, not the fast and very um, kanchong, very, very, uh, you know, rushing kind of uh, rabbit. So what you must do is you must actually remember to always be slow and steady and get it right. That's all I have for you today. So high five you are a math prodigy. Good job.